Okay, my friends. Okay, so happy Friday, everybody. Woohoo! We, um, this was, I'm, first of all, I'm Susan Bernacek, and we've got Suzanne Elizabeth. Is that what you, right? That's my Facebook name, but my, right. my name is Suzanne Orlando. Okay, so Su Suzanne Orlando, I see it here. And we, like, Suzanne and I just connected, which is the beauty of the digital world. And um, we're here today on behalf of the Elevate series, which is created by Amber Vilhauer and um, No Guts, No Glory Enterprises. I did tag her, and I will tag all this, all that, all these individuals in the comments after we're done with our live stream. But this series was birthed by Amber, and it's bringing thought leaders together during this time to create. Um, options and to share tips and advice personally and and mentally emotionally physically for our lives for your lives for your businesses to support like bringing thought leaders together to share what's working for us in our new norm and to focus on the good show up together support each other and give back to organizations and communities that are helping with the COVID relief and, and the virus and coming to, you know, kids for hungry and all sorts of stuff. So what we ask for you um, here is if you can do a watch party, hit the watch party or share this so that we can inspire and uplift and elevate as many as we can during this time. Um, we're going to focus here today, Suzanne and I, we're going to talk about stress and anxiety. We're going to share what's working for us. We're going to focus on what's working. We're not going to focus on what's not working or our struggles. So we want to really focus on the positive and to get you to get as many of, as of you in that, that mindset, because that is the shift is that we want to be aware and educated on what's going on. And, and obviously, um, how to best take care of ourselves and, and stay up to date on the news, but we don't want to drown ourselves in the news. We don't want to drown ourselves in the negative energy. And we want to always try to live a proactive day to day lifestyle. Right. Suzanne, like I feel Absolutely. like, yes. right. And just how can we be proactive for ourselves, for our minds, emotions, for our families, for our businesses, for our careers and, 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 you know, make lemonade out of lemons kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. for those of you who don't know me, I'm Susan Vernacek. Um, I've been in business for myself for over a decade, started by running a health and wellness magazine for women. Over the years, that's evolved in traveling the States and hosting signature workshops and retreats and speaking. And I'm a published art author. And now I, I do a lot of coaching and I have online programs. And I'm blessed to be here and be part of this series today. So, and I thank all of you who are watching live and watching the replay, if we don't catch your questions during the live, we will get them on the after. Um, this is the first time that I'm doing a live through Zoom onto the page, so just bear with us. Um, so, so that's me. Let I'm going to let Suzanne introduce herself. Go ahead, take it away. Okay, so I'm Suzanne Orlando. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and psychotherapist in the state of New Jersey. I've been practicing private psychotherapy for over almost coming up on 14 years and it's a, yeah it's exactly what i love to do and more recently i have also taken this wonderful platform of social media and i've taken my expertise in anxiety out of the office and onto the social media platform so i am also a psychotherapist also doubling as a coach to help people really level up, take control of their anxiety, and just live a real badass life that we're all entitled to live. So that's a little bit about my background. I love it. I know I saw your website. It was, it's amazing. So congratulations you. on your success and all that you do. It's, it's, a, it's great. Thank you. Thanks. So, so let's talk about this new norm. We're coming to the second week of, of a, new, a new life for, so many, of all of, for all of us, right? What what have you sh like what's working for you and what's working for your clients like what do you you know what do you see that's happening and and what's working that like what you teach i know you focus a lot on anxiety so if you want to um touch on that yeah so i think just in general what what is working is 
trying to keep as much normalcy as possible with the constant shift that we're feeling and the uncertainty. We can only control what's in front of us. We can only control the choices that we make every day. So, you know, one of the things that I'm doing myself and I always encourage people to do is to continue to do those things. Look, I mean, I think it's okay to have a day where you feel like you want to stay in your pajamas and you want to sit in your bed. And we also, we have to indulge in that level of self-care, but we can't get, we can't succumb to that. We have to continue, you know, my, what helps the best is to wake up with intention, to continue to do something for yourself. The first, like the second you step up and get out of bed, before you have to tend to your family, before you have to tend to your business, before you have to tend to the have tos of life, make sure that you engage in something that's pleasurable to you and isn't necessarily something that's being multitasked. So, for example, um, I think making your bed, as long as there's nobody sleeping in it next <laughs> to you still, <laughs> I think making your bed initially is a really good start. Yes, you might not be leaving your house, but why not do something and accomplish a task the second you wake up, right? And then in addition to that, doing something again for yourself, whether that means having your coffee or tea in complete silence by yourself with your own thoughts, whether that means journaling something, whether it means exercising or reading a chapter in a book, but anything that's purely selfish in the best way, that's going to give you that sense of accomplishment because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what what news or information we're going to be fed. We know what we are in control of. And if we start our day in control and at least do one or two things initially, that's going to set ourselves up for success. No matter what happens, we can always say, well, I guess what? I took time for myself. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, what I, what I like to do is when I do those things, even before I go to bed that night, kind of reflect on the day and say, well, you know what? No matter what happened today, I woke up and I made my bed and I felt really accomplished because I did that. Or I woke up, I made my bed and I had that cup of coffee in silence and it really helped give me clarity for how I wanted to set up the rest of my day. So attaching an emotion to the action that we did in the beginning of the day is really helpful too, because our brains thrive on that positive reinforcement yeah. and it'll give us the car- the encouragement the next morning when we want to lay in our bed for a long period of time, it'll give us the encouragement to get up and do it because we were, it was met with success the following yes. day, that, that morning. I agree. I love that. I mean, I can relate. And that's, you know, a lot of the stuff that I teach as well is we so often don't celebrate our days. Like yes. We take for granted how amazing and successful we are every single day. From the moment we even just saying yes to life, saying yes to get out of bed, saying yes to feeding ourselves, saying yes to feeding and nurturing our families, our children's, our husbands, like that is a lot. Like we take that for granted, but that is showing up. Mm-hmm. And when we, before your head hits the pillow at night, if you can take some time and reflect on every little thing, all of those meals that you made, all of those dishes that you washed, right? Yep, yep. All of the tasks that you did. And you say, shit, I am freaking amazing. And I That's had a productive right. day and I showed up and I said, yes, and I did my best. That is what's important, right? And, and did I laugh? Did I play? Did I tell those that I love them? Did I hug? Did I have that self-care? Yep. Like those are the important things. And you're right. When you can end your day, remembering that and owning it and patting yourself on the back, you not only get quality sleep, but you're you're gonna wake up more energized. So I Absolutely. totally agree with you. And yep. the whole waking up, like, man, and I know there's so many moms out there and so many of us who work from home. And mm-hmm. you know, the way my schedule shifted was I would always get up before everybody else, right? Because yes. I've learned over the years and that means the only person that's getting in my way is me if I don't wake up. Right. I can't blame mm-hmm. anybody else. That's but right. When my children were going to school, you know, I'd get up, I'd journal, I'd write, and then I'd drop them off, and then I'd come home, and I, I was getting into a routine of just working out after I dropped them off. Right. Well, that had to change. I have to now get up between 5 and 5.30 in the morning. I do my journaling. You know, I do my writing. I work on my book that I'm working on, and then I work out at like 7 a.m. before everybody else wakes up, and I feel always, I mean, it's been doing, I've been doing this for four years, but I feel like Superwoman, and right. when you put yourself first and before anybody else can get in your way, you your day is so grounded. And one of the things that I started to do this past week was I have a deck of um, like oracle cards. I've had them for years. I'm not a pro. I just use them sometimes when I need them. And so I just had this thought 
earlier this week. So now I've been waking up every morning and I've been sharing them with my people, with my community. Great. That's awesome. And just reading the message that we're getting and, and using that as grounding. Like this is our grounding message. Like I'm going to take this for the day and, and, and so I don't let anything negative like take me down. Like this is my right. grounding message. And it's been so creepy, like, like how aligned that the messages are. I believe that nothing is coincidence, right? Yeah. So, That's so those amazing. are some ways, you know, like I agree is like start your morning off, like owning it, owning it for you mm-hmm. so that you, there's science behind it between the hours 100%. of 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. Yes. Doing, even if it's just the dishes, not like who wants, who really wants to start the morning doing the dishes, but. <laughs> right. But you're <laughs> doing something. Yeah. You know, I know that there's, I know that there's t- plenty of people out there who um, you know, who don't see themselves as morning people. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's just a, you know, it's a bullshit excuse for yeah. sure, because it, you don't have to be a morning person. I don't think that, you know, when I'm practicing this form of self care, I don't think there's ever a morning that my alarm goes off where I'm like super excited because <laughs> I'm so cozy in my bed, but I know and recognize the value yeah. of that time where I'm able to pour into myself when everybody else is resting. And yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to jump out of bed with excitement from my cozy slumber, but yeah. I recognize <laughs> that starting my day that way is completely different. It gives yeah. me a different headspace than it does if I'm just rolling out of my bed when I have to. Yeah. So even if you're not a morning person, I encourage you, time is on our side right now. Time is a gift. This is a gift of time that we've all been granted. Yeah. And try the things that you otherwise wouldn't. I guarantee you that it's going to make a huge difference. I know. I cannot explain. that. You can't explain the power behind that, waking up in the uh-huh. morning and that energy. And that's one of the things, like you're right, like, you don't want to get out of bed. Like, I don't want to leave my husband. I want to snuggle up next to him. And when the kids jump in our bed, like, I love that. Yeah. But yeah, no, I hang on to the feeling that I never regret once I'm up and I do that morning work. Like I never regret it. I'm always like, this is so amazing. Like every morning when you complete that, I complete my workout. I complete my journaling. I complete that, that time by myself, I'm like so energized. And that is where you have to find your anchor emotion, your anchor, why your anchor feeling to keep you going. And you have to learn to like tap into that to stay elevated. Absolutely. It's so important. So important. And I think even throughout the day, look, I mean, we're, again, everybody's in this position that we've never been in before and our, and our days and our worlds are completely shifting constantly. And I think giving yourself grace and, and lowering the expectations that you may have for yourself, you know, dep- everyone's in a different circumstance. Some of us have children yeah. who are doing the online schooling. Some of us have spouses that you're both working from home and you're getting in each other's ways or, you know, whatever the case may be, the things that you probably could take on when this isn't happening is much different than what we can take on, even though this is happening, even though we have additional time, even though we're at home, yeah, everybody's world is not the way it normally is. So you have to give yourself permission to be okay with not being okay, to maybe not be able to complete the things that you normally would. I've had a basket full of dry laundry in my living room since Sunday night and I walk past it and it's not, it's not my priority right now. Right. It gets me frustrated when I walk past it, but then I say, you know what? Yes, it's still going to be there and no one's going to, you know, be impacted negatively because it's still sitting there. I need to get to it when I can. And I need to give myself grace that it's, it's okay. It's okay. If the house is a little messy, it's okay. If giving yourself grace, lowering your expectations and just being in the moment and taking care of yourself any way you can is really what is, is paramount right now. I agree. Like one of the things, you know, that I shared a um, few weeks ago or right when this first started is like, remember when we, if you are somebody that does go to work or when your children are at school, like you still have a work day. Yes. So forget about the dishes, forget about the laundry and forget about eating all day long because you don't eat all day when you're, if you're working a nine to five job, right? right? Yes. And yes. You're not laundry if you're working yes. a nine to five job and you're not yes. doing dishes during the yes. nine to five job. So yes. treat it like that. Like try your best to ignore it. And you do it after hours. Like, when does your work day end? Is it three o'clock? Is it four o'clock? And then you and then you do the laundry. Like, try to keep it just like if you're going to work, right? You know, and and release, like you said, like just 
be flexible and release that, that, um, um, what's the word, you know, expectations, expectations. Yes. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. What else? Like like what else for anxiety? I mean, Mm -hmm. what other like best tip do you have? Um, especially like when it creeps up during the day or, you know, sometimes I'm experiencing that, like, you know, a little bit of, you can feel your heart racing Mm -hmm. like in the afternoon when like your kids are getting antsy and you want to get stuff done with your job. And then like, sometimes when you feel like you're going to go down that rabbit hole, yes, you know what I mean? How do you catch it? What are some things? So I think, you know, especially now with, with, you know, receiving information, not even by the day, we're almost receiving information by the hour, right? So I think the right. So I think the first thing is to limit what you're allowing yourself to be exposed to in terms of the information that you're receiving. So if I'm if I have the news channel on in the background all day, that's going to drive my anxiety up as I hear different stories or see certain things. If I'm scrolling through social media, and I see whether you know, who knows what's true, or what's not, I see something that's true, but then I see a conversation and or I'm on a text chain and my friends are like, oh my God, like they're, they're losing their minds over certain things. I need to understand when it's getting too much for myself and when I need to step away from it and indulge in something different. So that's the first thing. The second thing is really understanding what is in my direct power that I can control in this moment right now. Um, I can worry about what it's going to be like a day from now, three hours from now, three weeks from now, four months from now. But how is that helping me? get through my situation right now? How is that helping me get through my work day? How is that helping me, you know, help my kids not lose their mind? So really pulling it back and sitting down and saying, out of everything that I'm concerned about or worried about or trying to accomplish, what is in my direct control right now? Mm -hmm. And if some of those things are not in your direct control right now, you have to just focus on what is and let that other stuff kind of fizzle away. Because if you, you can't, you can't, control everything at once. I mean, this is all the time, but I think for the most part right now, that would be my biggest suggestion is to quiet what's going on and write, maybe write everything down that you're worried about, write everything down. And then out of that, look at it. I'm a visual person. So I like this exercise, look at it and say, cross out the things that you can't do anything about right now and focus on what you can. So if I can focus on my kids are losing their mind because it's the third hour and they are done with the school thing, you know what, they're not going to be left back or they're not going to like not get into graduate school because they they shut down for the day. And maybe that right now that's saying to me that they need to go outside or they need to do something else. They need to turn on the TV and watch a show or whatever, you know, recognize what you have control over in the moment and, and take action on that and try to let the other stuff just be because it's not helpful to you. I love that. I love that. What comes to mind for me is, is, you know, being proactive, like what all the areas that you can be proactive mm-hmm. and the areas that you're going to be reactive, you don't yes. react. You yes. Don't react. Yeah. That's right. We're most likely reacting from emotions, which yes. does for us, right? Correct. I love that. I love that. And, and you were talking about, you know, the content in your life. And I talk about this too, is content, like you want the content in your life to be serving you, supporting yes. you. Mm-hmm. You don't want the content to be draining you. And what I mean by content, which I know you, you probably know is the exact same thing is what are you reading? What are you yep. watching? What are you listening to? Who are you hanging out with? Yep. You know, Netflix, everything. Like what is the content that's, yep. that's coming into your life? And remember, like balance it out. It's all yes. about finding your balance, you know, don't go gung ho gung ho on Netflix for the next month, right? Blurge a little bit, you know, yep. take advantage of this opportunity, but don't go down that rabbit hole. And same thing with the news and same thing with yep. you know, or drinking or eating, you know, everything mm-hmm. is, is you know, keep aware, you know, keep aware and be proactive. Yep. Exactly true. And I think that's true too for, you know, for those of us who do have, who do have businesses, right, is to be able to keep to some kind of a schedule during the day, um, have it have it in mind, but also be able to be flexible with that schedule. And again, with the expectations, right, have the schedule laid out for yourself. Because as I, as I said, and truly believe, sorry, we are, we, no, this is life, but this is life. And you're like, where's my husband? He's supposed to be outside. He's probably golfing. Is he golfing? Did uh, he go in the back without you? I don't know. 
Is he, okay, he, she's out there with you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so daddy's got to be outside because he knows that I'm inside on this. <laughs> Mommy, can I have a snack and can we fill the kitty pool? What? It's winter. We're not filling up the kitty pool. Go outside. <laughs> Go snack when I come get you in a few minutes. No. Go play. I'll get you. I'll get you something when I'm done, okay? Not right now, sweetie. It's okay. This is life. This is what we, this, but this is a good example of oh, what I'm we can right. have. I with. know. Right, that we wouldn't normally be contending yep. with, and I think, and again, I think that with just this is a, and again, nothing happens as a coincidence, right? Yeah. We were just talking about keeping to our schedules with our businesses, but being able to be flexible because getting asked for snacks and all of these things, like as we're working, right? It's this insane. is okay. Look at, and he's still being at me. Go outside. I will. will get you a snack after. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. I know. <laughs> this is it. This is it. This and, is it. And it's like, <laughs> my husband is supposed to be watching him. Where is he? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This yes. is great. But yeah, this is great. And, and um, what else? What else can we? I know. Well, I think, I think looking at it as, you know, again, it's per, I think at the end of the day, too, you know, it's essentially, Susan, when you started this this, what we were doing right now, you had said, you know, we're coming at this from a positive standpoint. And I think perspective and how we're, how we're viewing our circumstance and our situation plays a huge role in how we meet each day too. So I, you know, with, look, I mean, psychotherapist for 13, 14 years, I have all the tools and the strategies and skills. I know what to do. I know how, I know how to respond, but do I lose my shit? A hundred percent. And, and am I going to continue to do that? Yes. But, yeah. but, but with that said, I also try to view every day as a gift because I don't have the time that I have now with my family. And I don't have the time that I have now to essentially pour into my business and my clients and everything else connected to that. Right. So we lose our minds and it's okay to lose our minds and be where we're at in the moment. But then coming back to the center, as I like to call it, and looking at the perspective of this is a gift of time that I don't know when I'm going to have again. And I need to really use it to the best of my ability personally with my family, professionally, however I can and not lose myself to three days of a binge series of Netflix. Although that sounds wonderful sometimes. You know? I know. I know. But that's the thing is like, and when you tap into resources when you work on self-care and personal development, I mean, it's not an overnight success. I mean, you and I have been doing this stuff for years. And right. there was a time where I was depressed. And there was a time where I did think about suicide. But when you yeah. practice this stuff that we teach and that we learn, yep. and when you get to those little moments of losing your shit, you, you can quickly, you are more, you're quicker to tap into the tools and the resources right. to get you out, right? Yes. Like nobody is perfect. Nobody is. So we're always managing. Like I'm always managing my happiness. I'm always managing my health, my mindset. Like just like my weight and just like my muscles or my nutrition. It's yep. there's no end game. There is no there's end. Not. Nope. Right. This is a journey, a mindset, emotional, a physical, a career, a family, a motherhood. Like everything is a journey. There is no final destination. That's right. But the quicker that we can share, support, show up, be authentic, share that, mm -hmm. you know, we struggle too, but we've, but we're learning. We've learned and we share. We know how to quickly pull ourselves out or yep. ask for help to pull ourselves out and to right. get on track. And, and that's, that's the key in, in this kind of circumstance. Like you said, is take on your day. Like, what are you grateful for? Like, yeah. man, we, there is like, I see opportunity. I, yes, I had initial fear and like my husband and I were like, oh shit, like what the F? But we pivot and we're like, okay, wow. Like subconsciously we have been wanting a big break or we've been missing each other because yes. he's working a lot. And, yes. and obviously our goal was for everybody to stay healthy and we don't want people to get sick. And, but like my husband is home. All, like, this is awesome. And That's there's great. opportunity for people to have businesses, to, to yes. grow businesses, to yes. start businesses, right? There's, I see yep. opportunity. I see yes. struggle and pain, but yep. on the, we're, 
if we choose all of us, even you and I, obviously, yep. like, we will grow. We will become stronger. We will yes. become wiser. Yes. That that's amazing opportunity when you put it all together as a as the world, as society. Like we can. I mean, that will sh- that will have a big shift. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And also with that said, like, you, you know, you're talking about like your husband being home and valuing that, valuing that gift that he's with you, you know, that, that you're more present in each other's lives. And I, as to your point, this is a slowdown that I think everybody could use. How overscheduled are we as people? Right. And it's like, if you're not overscheduled, right, you feel like you're not doing enough. Yeah. And this is like, oh my, this, uh, my, my hope for this, when we get back to you know, our normal day to day is that people will recognize the value of the slowdown and not go immediately back into overscheduling and which creates more anxiety and stress. Yeah. And the value of our careers and our yeah. jobs. I mean, yes. unfortunately, some people are struggling and some people might be losing, right? But but you still will have a sense of appreciation for having a job. Absolutely. You know, like, I know it sucks. Like, trust me, it sucks. And it's not like, you know, I'm a coach and you're a coach. Yep. yep. Yeah. Some of our clients are struggling, so we have to adjust. And, you know, yep. I get it. But there's still a creation of like, wow, I took, did I take that for granted? Yeah. You know, and some, you know, I always say this, my husband and I always say like, if, if something was to go rock bottom, I would apply and try to get a job anywhere. If I have right. to work at a gas station, if I have to work at anywhere, I, if right. I, I would do it. Right. I would do it because I would, I want to provide for my family, right. but it just makes you appreciate like what you have and the choices yep. that you have to have the career that you want. And yep. in that there's so much opportunity out there to create whatever it is that you want. And, and now more than ever, people mm-hmm. have time. They have time to be created. hundred percent. Yeah. To, to rebirth their yeah. lives or their yes. careers, right? To yes. think of it. Like this is a rebirth. I, I a rebirth for people. Absolutely. And people who were people, you know, I've I've had so many conversations, as I'm sure you have had too, where people are like, Oh my, you know, how do you do everything that you do? And how do you and and I wish I could do that, but I don't have time and I I I've always envisioned myself doing this. Well, now's the time, right? Now's the time. You you have time on your side, do the research, yeah. figure out what it is that you've been putting off and start to dive into it. You know, why not? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> let me, let me see if there's anything on, um, I mean, I don't see any comments. I wish that we, it would do that. Give us comments. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can share on. No, I can't. Um, those of you who are watching live or the replay, chime in, share your tips, share your advice, yeah. um, share the organizations that we can support and give back to. Um, ask your questions. We'll answer them. We're just trying to figure out, you know. How to do it. <laughs> it's Um, a learning process right yes 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 let's see i just shared it but i don't know if i just shared it on my business page again or on my okay and i have a watch party going and i see i see lisa hi lisa she heard me Uh, (laughs) oh she's good yay hi lisa can you see that i can i oh i can um start a watch party too Although it's at the end, I might have to just do it at the other. Going and I see, I see Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, hi, Lisa. Can you see that? No. I can. I oh, I oh, can. Wait. Um. Wait, I'm hearing. Shoot! I hope I just didn't exit. I oh, still no. have to. Okay, so yeah, I can't see anything and I'm scared to um turn it on. We got people on um Insta. Hi everybody okay. on Hi. <laughs> Is there anyone saying anything on Insta? No, I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell. Um so any other any other tips or advice? I mean, how can people get a hold of you if 
if they want to, you know, talk to you more about anxiety. Yeah. So on, on Facebook, um, my handle is Suzanne Elizabeth on Instagram. I'm, um, anxiety alchemist on yeah. Instagram and you can certainly get in touch with me that way. Um, and my website is www.suzanneorlando.com. We can add that to the comments after. Yeah. Right? If anybody wants, and I'll, and I'll put my Instagram handle and all that awesome. stuff down there. Awesome. Um, but for sure. And I guess the only other tip is, you know, in addition to all of the, you know, all of the, it, it's certainly positive and all of the things that we can do wonderfully yeah. for ourselves. But I think the, the, also to let yourself feel what you're feeling when you're feeling it, even if it's not a positive emotion, because the more we push down, it's going to just come back like a volcano. So just yeah. acknowledge what you're feeling when you're feeling it. Know that that's not where you need to live forever. And then try to, in, try to engage some of these strategies that we talked about today. And certainly starting your day, doing something completely for yourself yeah. is, you know, because at least you can say if, if the day turns into a jumbled mess. Well, you know what? I started my day doing something for myself and I started my day with good intention and I started my day doing something positive. I agree. I think like if we're going to take anything away from this, I really, really highly, highly, highly recommend waking up even 10, 15 minutes earlier than everybody else and having your time. I think that has the most yeah. benefits and I can't even ex describe the internal amazing emotions when you get that time to yourself and yes. when the day turns into a shit show, you're okay because yes. you take care of yourself. You know, I think that if that's anything that that's like the number one thing I could tell people to, to push and do yes. is the first thing. I think yes. that's a hundred percent. And, and again, we said this earlier, but um, even for those just hopping on, even if you pride yourself to not be a morning person, do this for, at, it sounds like a long time, do this for a solid week. Yeah. And then you can evaluate and see, you know, it's hard to get up. But once I'm up and doing for myself, yeah. see what that's like. And you know what? You still might not pride yourself to be a morning person, but at least you'll be able to do something positive yeah. for yourself. And you have evidence that you can do it. I always Correct. teach you, Yes. Whenever you do something, if you've done it one time, I don't yeah. even care. Like my, the clients who I work with, if... They got up at 5.30 in the morning and they worked out. And then the next day they're like, no, I just can't do it. I'm like, no, you can do you it. You can do it. You're you can, you just don't want to. Yes, you're And then we have to get to. real with ourselves and honest. Yes. Like, it's not that you can't. It's you don't want to. And that's okay. That's right. You've got to own and accept that decision, right? That's right. That's right. So, so, yeah, I think it's so, and especially seven days in a row, then you know you can do it. You can do it. And anything, anything that is new or any, any change that we want to make – I don't know that it's going to be easy for anybody. And that's the whole beauty of it. Because if we have to push past the hard or the difficult or the not wanting to, to be able to get the results on the other end. Yes, 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 yes. And I wanted to, you know, also quickly say about communication. Like when you said, when you're, when you are feeling down or you're not, you're not um, feeling hopeful, feel those feelings. Write them down, Jack. Write journal if you journal, but not even just journal. Like, call somebody or yes. talk to your partner or talk yes. to your, like. It is okay. It's not taboo. Like, share what's going on in your mind, and that's a, one of the things that that I have. I'm proud that I have developed over the years because I used to be a poor communicator, and my husband and I have really like. People say marriages get worse after children. I have not experienced that. Like we. I feel like we are at our best. Like we continue to grow as a couple. That's awesome. Which That's yeah, awesome. which I'm amazed because I used to be a bartender. Uh huh. And, um, but which was fun. I loved it. But that's when you don't like. I had to get out of bartending because I never wanted to get married. You know, because gotcha. you hear yeah. all the drama. Yes. You, hear, yes. okay, you see yes. all the the affairs and the cheating. And, yeah. yeah. You're essentially a, 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 a therapist in a way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So I had to get out of that. And, and, you know, I always thought that it wasn't going to be good after children, but that's not for us. But right. I, the biggest reason is because I have been the leader of us, us, of us, but he's stepped up too, is the communication. And it's just sharing when we're feeling right. what we're feeling, whatever that is. Yep. We can't explain it. We just say, this is what I'm feeling. I don't know what it is, but I just want to get it out. 
Because right. Or we wouldn't and we'd blow up at each other. And could you imagine if I didn't have this skill during this time? Oh, oh yeah. we probably would get divorced. Uh-huh. You know? But right. communication is, is don't be afraid to communicate. Don't be afraid to ask somebody if you can vent if you're not comfortable yet with the people in your family. Like practice getting it out. Absolutely. Somebody. And yeah. It's a, the biggest thing during these times. Yep. Getting it out, not hiding it and not being, not being ashamed of it either, because yeah. odds are, if you're feeling it, there are plenty of others that are feeling it too. And if you talk to somebody, a friend or your spouse or whoever, they might also be feeling that. And that might also give them permission to talk about it and express themselves too. Yes. And then you could cheers over a beer. hundred <laughs> percent. And I was going to say those bartending skills are going to probably come in or have come in. I very too bad. I mean, I'm like, we did not even stock up on anything. Oh, no. It's like, we need to stock up. Yes. Fail. Oh, <laughs> you can still do that, hopefully, where you are. <laughs> what? I said, hopefully you can still do that to some extent where you are, that you can. No, um, I think our liquor stores are closed. Ooh. I think they've been closed for a week. Oh, wow. Okay. But we can order wine. Okay. There you, it's hope is not lost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish I wish it was like Florida. Like um, they sell beers in the grocery stores, I think, right? In Florida, I think, I think they do. But not Some of them do, yeah. Yeah. Not in yeah it, it, I'm in Jersey. So okay. some, some grocery stores do. Some do not. But liquor stores are still open. Some of them deliver. <laughs> Bottle King delivers. <laughs> yeah, I, I alarm but they were <laughs> where where i live well now delivery is starting to uh, you know pick up obviously because what's going on but then like uber eats and stuff but when i first moved here i've been here nine years in the poconos there is no delivery the only the only company <laughs> that delivered to our house was domino's oh and i don't eat that stuff but when i was when i had my i have twins five-year-old twins oh, wow. and we were little and my husband was traveling during soccer season he's a soccer coach for a university um I couldn't get out and I just did not want to carry them out. Oh. I was so hungry. I was like, I need, we need dinner. And I got, I got Domino's and I opened it up and I almost vomited. <laughs> <laughs> and the odor. And I was like, I can't be this. And I, I threw it out. And wasted oh no. It. I wasted I've done pizza. that. I've done that with pizza once in my life. Yes. It's, it is what it is, you know? Oh. <laughs> Okay, so oh my gosh, such a pleasure to connect with you. Yes, you thanks too. for joining. Um, of everybody watching live with the replay. This was the Elevate series on behalf of Amber Vilhauer, No Guts, No Glory Enterprises. We will share all that information Monday and Tuesday. I'll be live again with um, other guests. Again, it's it's thought leaders coming together to elevate you to share what's working for us in hopes that you take some action or it inspires you um, to implement or to even share, to share this with. I will share some organizations that the Elevate series has listed if um, to give back. Um, and if any of you watching, you have other organizations or ways that we can support somebody, somebody, a community, whatever that is, please don't hesitate to share in the comments. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. This was so, awesome. This felt really good. You can find me here, Susan Vernacek on Instagram, Susan Vernacek or SusanVernacek.com. Um, message us. If you want to be a guest, um, shoot me a message. All right. Awesome. Yay. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was fantastic.